Hi friends, this is Pastor Tom Van Duzer of Our Savior Lutheran Church in Kansas City, Kansas. Join us Saturdays at 5.30 p.m. or Sunday morning, 9 o'clock or 11.11 a.m. Check us out on the website. Thanks for listening. On All Saints Day, the church typically takes a look at uh, heaven and uh, the gift that God has given us and those who are there already. We read the role, uh, one of which, by the way, was Pastor Jeske, our pastor uh, here at Our Savior a number of years ago. Pastor Jeske served us for three years, was taken to heaven this year. But a story was told about a man who came to St. Peter at the Pearly Gates, and uh, St. Peter said, what have you done to gain eternal life? And the man said, well, let me tell you, I was traveling on down this road when I spied a group of men gathered around this, uh, this woman in a broken down car. They were mean and menacing, and they were about to accost her. And I stopped my car, I pushed past them, and I stood in front of her and said, in the name of Jesus, stop, stop. And the leader said, well, what are you going to do to stop us? And the man said, I will fight every one of you if that's what it takes. St. Peter said, wow, when did that happen? And the man said, oh, about 20 minutes ago. It's a joke. Anyway, see, he, he died. And uh, uh, sort of a sad joke. Now, of course, uh, uh, we have many misconceptions about what saints are. Some would say saints are special people. There's only a very few of them. Uh, they're people who have done great things. Uh, you know, like Mother Teresa. I mean, that's not me. And they're, they're revered and, and even prayed to. I'm not sure I want that in heaven. Well, this morning we're going to take a look at who the saints really are. And turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 7. Always put your Bible on your phone so you have your Bible everywhere with you. I enjoy taking my uh, paper Bible. And it's always, I always preach on a text from the scripture lessons, so it's always in the bulletins as well. Revelation is confusing to a lot of people. And this section that Sally read from the balcony, uh, it gives us three separate pictures of who the saints are. First of all, from Revelation 7, verse 4, And then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. And thank you for pronouncing all those uh, tribes, Sally. Uh, from the tribe of Judah, 12,000, etc., down to, uh, to uh, Joseph. The saints are viewed as the new Israel. God's chosen people marching through this world, waiting for the promised land. We are the new Israel of God, 12 by 12, just as many as you can count. And then we go on to verse 9, and almost a different picture. And after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. The saints are the new world. The world remade so that all nations, all tribes, all peoples are finally back together under the, under the banner of Jesus Christ. And then this third picture, um, the saints as God's new people. One of the elders asked me, who in, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? Sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These saints are God's new people, renewed, washed clean. Different pictures, but all of the same event. You know, might even see that whenever you read the book of Revelation, realize that God is sort of jumbling up pictures of the end times. And it's sort of like that, maybe you've been to a wedding and you've seen some of the pictures of the wedding, everybody nicely posed and... Uh, and then in there is one of the pictures somebody took with their camera right as somebody didn't expect it. And that's what the wedding looked like. You see, they're the, sort of the, they're the same event, but you wouldn't really even know it. But as you look at all the pictures, you get a picture of who God's people are. By the way, this is a picture of who God's people are. At one time, they're the saints of God dressed in the robes of white and they look perfect and beautiful and all attentive and all singing praises to God. And another time, sort of goofy, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit less than what we would expect. You know, sinners at the same time saints. We'll get into that in just a moment. Now, there's a couple things that we need to know about the saints that Revelation 7 
tells us. First of all, in Christ, um, you are that holy person. Now the word saints actually means holy ones. Uh, saints come from Latin sanctus. Sanctus comes, uh, translates the, uh, the word kadosh in Hebrew, holy. And most people think of holy as just being religious, but it actually means special or different, set apart from the rest. Sort of like that, uh, uh, that ladies, that, uh, that china that you set apart for a special occasion. Uh, or guys, maybe the, uh, uh, you know, maybe the uh, cognac that you bring out just for a thimbleful when there's a special celebration. Holy, special, different, set apart from the rest. And this is what uh, God says about the saints. Now, in Deuteronomy 33, God says, Surely it was you who loved the people, for all the holy ones are in your hands. Isn't that amazing? That God's holy ones are all the holy ones. You know, it's not just special people. It's not just uh, a, a select group. Look at Matthew 27. This is a, a wonderful text. When Jesus was on the cross in that darkness of three hours the the graves were open we don't even know what I, I'm fascinated to find out what this is like the graves were open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised these were, were were people in Jerusalem who had believed in the promises of God and then Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1 as he addresses this letter he says this to the church of God who is at Corinth to those who are sanctified in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Sanctified, sainted, called to be saints. Now, he didn't just say, well, you know, uh, there's some up in the choir loft who are saints, a few over in there on the left side, I see one or two on. No, all of you are saints. As a matter of fact, you're called to be God, uh, God's saints with uh, those who in every place call in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. If you call in the name of Jesus, you are a saint. And I want you to turn to the person next to you or maybe behind you and point right at him and say, you're a saint. Do that right now. You're a saint. You're a saint. You bet. You bet. You bet. Now things to know about the saints, in Christ you are one. Uh, Revelation 7:14 says, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The beautiful thing, my friends, is we know that our robes are white not because we washed them, but they were washed by Him. We're the children of God. I know how many of uh, uh, your kids uh, wash their own clothes. You sort of wait until they're teenagers. George, do you wash the clothes here? You know, not quite yet. I don't think so. I don't think so. I didn't learn until late. Now there. If it was up to me, my clothes would have been dirty all the time when I was a kid. But we're children of God, and God the Father, through the blood of Jesus, has washed us clean, my friends. And so, as we look at saints, there are people who have problems and, and difficulties just as we do. But, you know what? We're saints too. And so our robes have been washed, and they need washing. You know, I don't know about you, but if I had, I've had sins this week, and when I... Uh, came up to the altar. We had that moment of silence. I thought of a few things that, you know, God, that isn't very saintly. But he washes my robe. He makes me clean and acceptable to him. And so that's the joy that I am one. I am a saint. Now, the second one is this. It's not about you or about them. Uh, it's about Jesus. This morning we prayed for uh, Pastor Charles Wesco, and I don't know if you caught that news feed this week, I think it was Tuesday morning, uh, second day of his mission trip to the Cameroon. There had been fighting in the area, and his car was driving into town to start setting up the mission, and a burst of automatic weapons came through, and he was killed. What a tragedy that a missionary there to bring the peace of Jesus is killed. Now certainly, we grieve his loss. But I think Pastor Wesco would be there to tell you it wasn't really about him. It's about Jesus. And we don't want necessarily people to know about Pastor Wesco, but about, about Jesus. As I came down the, uh, the office hallway this morning, I noted that we, had, um, the, we have the pictures of all our pastors. Pastor Jeske, who passed away this last week, 
uh, this last year was among them. And every one of the pastors here, Pastor Jorgensen, Pastor Mundinger, down to Pastor Holtz, Pastor Eberhardt, and, uh, and hopefully you can say Pastor Van Duzer said, it wasn't about me. It's about Jesus. And when we get that great saint of God here, if Pastor Cal says, yes, I'll come and be your pastor, I'll tell you, it won't be about Pastor Cal either, but it'll be about Jesus. This is what uh, Revelation says, since we're surrounded, excuse me, Hebrews 12, Well, surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. What's the job that a witness does? A witness doesn't tell the police officer, well, let me just tell you, I got 20-20 eyesight, and I have been witnesses to many things. As a matter of fact, I am a star testifier in court. You ought to hear how I testify. It is so good, the, ought, the uh, jury is just wild. What are the police officers going to say? Just tell me what you saw. Just, just tell me what you saw. Tell me what, what, be a witness. It's not about you, it's about what you saw. And when you've seen Jesus, my friends, you will be among those great cloud of witnesses. And it won't be about you. It'll be about, about him. Third, being a saint doesn't mean we're great. Saints aren't always great. You know what Paul said in Romans chapter 7? Uh, he said this, I don't understand what I do for what I want to do I do not do but what I hate I do what a wretched man I am the reality my friends is that while we are called Saints of God in this side of heaven we're also sinners too you don't have to hang around a church very long to realize that a church is full of sinners yep we're Saints of God but we're sinners too you know, we frustrate each other. Sometimes we even sin against each other. I have visited saints of God who have been in prison. They have, cre they have done, uh, they have given in to terrible sins. But they've asked Jesus for forgiveness. Maybe they'll spend the rest of their lives in prison. But indeed, they will be in heaven. We are sinners as well as saints. And never forget that, my friends. Pray for me that... Uh, that that people don't get distracted by my weaknesses, my faults, my sins, but that they see Jesus. And I'll pray for you too, that, that in your witness, that your sinfulness wouldn't get in the way. I had a um, brother in Christ, uh, Matt, I still remember Matt. Uh, um, he, uh, he wanted to be part of our prison ministry in Texas. We went to a local uh, prison. Uh, there was a, actually a very large Texas prison in Sugarland, Texas. And um, Matt said, you know, I don't know what I can tell these guys because I have weaknesses too. You know, I I'm not perfect. I said, Matt, we don't need perfect people to go to prison ministry. We need people who have had sins and problems and temptations and have known how to overcome them in the name of Jesus. Think of all these guys. Uh, actually, there was a Christian uh, prison ward in our, our ward, so guys who had come to Christ in, uh, uh, in jail, in prison, or who had rekindled their faith because of their current problems, had uh, gathered together and were allowed to gather together, and so we uh, were able to go and help them with Bible studies and uh, math classes and reading classes. But I said, you know, each one of these guys is there because they couldn't handle, they couldn't handle the challenges of their life. They couldn't handle their temptation. You need to go and say, yes, I am a sinner too. But I'm still a saint of God. And let me tell you how I deal with the frustration, how I deal with the temptation, how I deal with it. You see, we are saints and sinners at the same time. The biggest frustration in church is that sometimes we're still sinners. We're still frustrating. We're still pompous. We're still inconsistent. We're still lazy. We're still self-righteous. But you know what? We're still loved by God. And we are getting there. Paul said in Philippians 3, 12 through 14, he said, I press to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have yet taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, forget what's behind, and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to the prize that which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. 
There's always room for improvement, my friends. And in this side of heaven, this side of heaven, God will always improve us. We look forward to that day when we'll receive the crown of righteousness which Jesus won for us. And that we'll take the place that Jesus has prepared for us. And we will be with him and see him as he is. It's wonderful, my friends, though, that he's declared that we already are his. Let's pray about it. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you've made us saints. We look forward to the day when we will be one of those saints in heaven. And we ask that you would speed its coming. Help us to look forward to being one of those great cloud of witnesses, even as we start now in this life, so that we will someday be before your throne and saying it's all about you, Jesus. Praise and honor and worship and glory be to you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.